I didn't believe I would still do it when my foot slipped. Do it twice I blow that thing. Fifteen minutes to Raven's Door. Ten minutes to Raven's Door. Five minutes to Raven's Door. Hey. Hello. Hello, Ben. <laughs> so this is your masterpiece, is the my Hubble. Masterpiece, yeah. <laughs> the world's hardest route in 1990. I reckon That's so, yeah. Still, still a test piece now. I think yeah. if it was dry, you'd be struggling and <laughs> forget it. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think it's doable today. So six moves, the first two moves are quite easy. You get this undercling, and this one's really hard. And then it keeps going, the right hand crimp, left hand undercling, and the final slap into a good sloper. Yeah, well Hubble was climbed Hubble in 1990, and, um, and it actually came together pretty quick. Both me and Jerry were trying it actually together, trying to sort of be the first to do it. Jerry was also doing competitions at, at that time. He was really into competition climbing. And um, yeah, I just managed to beat him to it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, I think it took about 10 days in all or something. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the hardest routes that I'd done up until then were probably, well, the routes that I'd done in France, like Agincourt and Maginot Line, which were 8C. And I, I knew Hubble was like, you know, significantly harder than those, but uh, um, which is why I gave it 8C+. Plus. Um, yeah, I think consensus is it is around about 9A, yeah. I think. Um, I think it's not really that important because still, even if you call it like first 8B plus boulder problem, it's like way ahead of its time. Yeah. Because like other than Hubble, I think the world's first 8B pluses came like yeah, I don't five, know. six years later. And maybe those were also the years of maybe finding the training more efficient than building the board? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we built the schoolroom in 1993. Um, and so, you know, that gave us, you know, much better facilities for training. So, yeah, I was doing a lot of bouldering on there, a lot of campusing, um, circuits at Crestbrook and stuff. Definitely training really, yeah, really hard. M much more, I mean, probably not as structured as people people's training is now, but a lot more structured than it had been up until that point. Um, you know, started doing sort of interval training, which is obviously much more effective. What keeps you psyched to keep on climbing and to maintain like fairly really high level? Like, I mean, you a few years ago, as you still did a 9A, which is mind blowing. Um, I just really love climbing. It's just, yeah. Um, yeah, I love the sort of movement. I mean, I actually, I did, after my daughter was born, I did actually pack up cli packing climb for quite a while. I think I was sort of sidetracked by having, you know, being a father and having the business and stuff, and I'd lost my motivation a bit. But um, yeah, I went for a walk up at Malham once with my wife, and we saw this guy, Jordan Byes, working this route, uh, which turned out to be rain shadow, and I was looking at it thinking, God, that just looks incredible. And I was like walking away to the, from the crag, thinking, or talking to my wife, saying, "God, yeah, I wonder whether I, I wonder whether I could do that, get back into shape and do it." And it just kind of got me all motivated to, you know, get back into climbing, sport climbing, and so I started training and everything. That was like February or something, and I think about six six weeks later, I'd managed to do it after about eighteen days. Wow, I, was, I was just like so blown good. away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I just yeah, I just love climbing really, like you.
Adam, shall I bring this along? There's a chapter on fear of failure, just in case you get scared. If you're going to try a little problem, it's pretty hard. I left school when I was 17, and the whole of my last year at school, I wanted to be a rock climber. There was, it was before professional rock climbing, but I just dreamt of going out every day, and my idols were climbing all over the world, and I thought, that's what I want for my life. I want to be able to go climbing, I don't want to work, and I want to travel the world. And before the last examination had finished, I think I finished it half an hour earlier, I put my hand up and said, sir, I finished, can I go? And he said, yes. And I walked out, got my rucksack, and I walked past the classroom, and I looked all the, the children in there, and I sat out on my lifelong adventure. So you were living here in deep winter, having really bad sleeping bag, and still climbing what could be possibly the world's hardest route back then. Yes, yes. I think it, I think it was. I mean, when I did Little Plum, I think that was the hardest route probably in the world. I used to go to bed and put my hat on, a scarf on, gloves on, two or three pairs of trousers, all my jumpers, and then crawled into this really cheap sleeping bag and just kind of lay there. And then at Christmas, for my Christmas present, I got a sleeping bag, a better sleeping bag with down in it from my parents, and that helped. Adam, what's happening to your legs? Are you shivering or is that just your legs shaking? His whole body's just shivering. He's going to come off. He doesn't, he doesn't look that good, does he? I mean, what's he, what's he done on Gritstone, do you know? We'll find out. No, I don't think he's done a lot. Go on. Oh, he's done it. Well done. Good job, Adam. Thanks. Ah, Can't believe you did that. You were shaking, you were shaking like bad. a jelly. You were shaking like <laughs> a jelly. Thought you were going to come off every move. Yeah, I wasn't solid <laughs> at all. Yeah, it was quite humid, but I have to tell you, you were pretty strong back in 1981 without sticky boots. <laughs> <laughs> the bowl brown was hard, like all these two yeah. underglings and reaching all the way to the pocket. Yeah. It was a revolutionary move. Right? Yeah, nice one. Yeah, if you look how big I wrote the, the writing, <laughs> and I give it three stars in big letters. I'm telling everybody, that's a classic. There's a, a roof around the corner called Tom's Roof, and I, I found some limited boulder problems, and my ambition was to go to America, and there was two routes there which were in the magazines which had never been repeated, which were supposed to be the hardest routes in the world by Jim Collins. One was Psycho, and one was uh, Genesis. And I really wanted to go there and do those routes. And I'd spoken to people who tried them and weren't able to do them. And they were like, oh, they're just so hard. So I made these boulder problems and I bouldered and I bouldered and I spent the whole winter and the start of the spring bouldering on these things. And at that time, nobody was doing that. Everybody thought I was crazy. I said, what are you doing today? I said, I'm going up to Tom's roof. And they're going, what? Tom's roof bouldering? And that's what, that's what really helped me doing those things. And then I went there and I did the second ascent of Genesis. I did uh, Psycho. I think I did it third try. And and for me to do to do that, I, I will never to, to my death. I'll always remember my hand reaching towards the lip, knowing that I was going to do it. And in my head, I'm doing Psycho. I'm doing Psycho. I'm doing Psycho. And I got the lip, and I go, I've done Psycho. I've done Psycho. And then it it was just it was just my you know. You're so motivated when you're younger. It's, it was just an amazing time. You yeah. know, those those first times of doing those really hard routes and then you spend a, the rest of your life trying to, to get that same buzz, that same excitement, that, you know, defeat that last, last project. You're always looking for another project. But I thought, I'm going to be better than everybody else. And the reason for that is that I'm going to climb more than anybody else. And I know that nobody wants it more than me. Nobody's going to train harder than me. I mean, it doesn't always work like that. And obviously, I had the genetics and strong fingers and lots of things played into it. But my, my g thinking back then was, if I climb more than everybody else, I'll be better than everybody else, which is not true. But that you had to have mega, mega dedication. Whereas now, it's just easy, isn't it? You just go to the gym. It's just, it's just easy. I had done the ace. There it was in the middle of the plantation, a classic problem and one of my hardest. It felt great to have it done at last, and I was more than happy. Yet I also felt a sense of relief. The ace had taken a lot out of me. I had worked hard 
at it for some time, training all the time, dieting, always on the verge of injury from such a debilitating regime, always worrying that someone else might do it before me. I hadn't been able to go away or do anything else. Towards the end, just before I succeeded, the problem had started to feel like a shackle. Awesome, man. Oh, man. That was fucking good. I didn't think you were going to do it. You had your, your right. I was going to say your right leg was under. I'm like, get your right leg out. Didn't you think that? His foot was under there. I'm like, you've got to get... I'm like, you've got to get your right hand out on, out of the thing. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm going, fucking... No. I just thought you're not going to do it. Well done. That was fantastic. That was, that was just truly brilliant. Well done. It, it's so really cool. cool for me that the years of modern bouldering finally paid off on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> First time on such a historic climb. Yeah. That was brilliant to watch. That was so cool. Wow. You've got to say, I mean, you can't be bloody on sighting and flashing, can you? You have so much pressure to just... To, 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 to just In this time, it yeah. helped. But, yeah. but this has never been flashed. But has there been no. other eight P's flashed in the area, like on grit? Oh, on grit? grit? No, this is no. the first eight P flash on grit. Wow, yeah. good job, yeah. Yeah, but that was that was brutal. That was really, really, really impressive. I mean, never in a million years when you did that, you, you think somebody's going to come and just flash it. I'm really happy. It was great to see. I had the the real thing. I had it on cassette, so I VHS. <laughs> And it was the first climbing movie I've ever had, and I think I watched it like 30 times. Mm -hmm. And before coming here, I re-watched it, and I still remember so much of it, because yeah. uh, when you're young and you have idols, you absorb everything, you know? You remember everything they did and everything they said. So it's really cool to be here. So Jerry, it was great. 
I noticed that uh, you've written two books. I wrote one. <laughs> it's wow. a photo book. Wow. <laughs> Working with two photographers. I hope wow. it will serve as a wow. maybe inspiration to yeah. to climb a bit more wow. again. Well, it's been real, a real <laughs> honor to have you here in England. And it's Thank been a you. privilege. <laughs> Come here. It really has. You, you, for me, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest. Thank you. And I'm sure we don't, we are not seeing each other last time, and yeah. I think I'll cool. be back Can't in Sheffield. Wait. Great watching you, Thank you. <laughs>